improve their draft situation? Well, I was learning about them through your most recent article because you outlined every one of them, and I thought, wow, I've, that's good, good learning. You were, you were my uh, one scout uh, that I was relying on because I haven't gotten that list set out like that. Of course, there are some very good football players from Georgia, and we, we think that you know our state, our adopted state, obviously, is, is full of a lot of athletes, and, uh, and that plays right into line with the type of system that, that uh, Coach Quinn has in place with a lot of um, you know, fast athletic football players. So uh, we're really looking forward to our, our local pro day, which, of course, focuses on a lot of the guys from Georgia, which is uh, always a really interesting uh, time for us because we feel we can pick some guys up not only later in the, in the draft, but uh, in our college free agency situation. So, again, really excited to be living in that state because I think we can always pull some really talented football players. Uh, speaking of Wisconsin, <laughs> ah, yeah. yes. uh, have you had a chance to see Troy Fumagalli uh, on tape at all or see him in person? Yes, of course. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's another talented uh, tight end that's come out of that school, as you know. Mm -hmm. seems like over the years, year after year, there's always someone playing there, and they do a good job uh, cultivating him there. So it'll be fun to watch where he ends up. Anything that stands out about his game? No, I just I think he's a well-rounded player. I think he's a, he's a guy that's you know obviously a smart football player who's got the drive to to uh, you know provide both as a receiver but also get get in the way as a blocker, which is important. We all we're all looking for players that have versatility to be both. You don't. It's very difficult to find a guy who's you know the X and the Y type of player, the Y and the F, excuse me, who are both athletic and are big-time blockers. That's not an easy thing to find. Um, so any element of showing that they possess both qualities uh, is obviously a good thing for him. So. Your thoughts on Vita Vey, the uh, defensive tackle out of Washington? Yep, obviously a big man who, uh, you know, again, uh, I think a lot of the league is really honed in on seeing what he can do because I, I think the feeling is he can come in and, and play right away and, and, you know, be an impact type of player in this league. It's fun watching him move around. He's a big man who can cover ground for how, sure. How what do you think in general of just about the interior rushers in this in this draft class from what you've seen so far? Yeah, I, I think uh, there's there's some interesting rushers inside, of course, uh, outside like there always is. I mean, we've we've taken care of that two years in a row, so uh, it's fun to, to hone in on some of those interior guys, and we'll see. I mean, we're in the process right now, as I've mentioned before, Vaughn, where we're looking at our own players, where we are with our own signings, uh, what may be out there again in free agency, and then comparing this week to see exactly how these guys are getting up, you know, upfield because that's important for us, right? With Dan Quinn's defensive uh, philosophy, we need to make sure we can shoot the gap, and it's important to see how explosive these guys are off the mark. Even though they're not hitting in the combine, we get a chance to see their true explosiveness, and that's important to really pull it all together for us. A question about the interview process: as you're uh, investigating kind of the personalities of these guys, how heavily do you rely on asking some of their teammates who are here about? You know, each guy is that part of the, is that part of the deal? That's part of the process. Not only do we ask some of the, their teammates, you know, who we would, you know, who they would like to be beside them at the next team they're playing, but it's also interesting to ask some of their competition from other schools, right? Who was the toughest guy you played against? Who was the most athletic? Who who posed the most problems? And and you can glean some information that way. So. It's part of the process. Obviously, it's not the most important part, but um, we rely on our scouting staff to do a lot of research in that way as well. As you can imagine, we put a lot of money into our scouts going out and doing the research. Uh, but to kind of hit some of these players impromptu is, is kind of interesting to see what they're interesting to see what their response is. Have you ever heard from teammates uh, that were unanimous about a guy's character flaw where you said, no, we don't really like that guy anymore? Yeah, yes, we, we've had that for sure. Yeah. It, it's not that often because I feel like too often there's a loyalty element there, you know, where they're trying to make sure they have their guys back. <laughs> Every once in a while there is, though. It's, it's, it's an interesting setting when you're asking that question in that 15-minute interview. And there, there's a little bit of a, you know, discomfort there, right, when someone starts to reveal something. But it happens every once in a while. How's the receiver group in this year's draft class, and how do you feel like your depth is at that position? Well, I, I, you know, Kelsey, I think there are a lot of numbers, as always, at the receiver spot. Uh, there are some, as always, there's some fast guys and athletic guys. I know it's been it's been talked about that maybe it's not the strongest class in, in you know, comparatively speaking. Um, but as you know, there are certain draft uh, classes of receivers over the years that have been strong, and some have not been. And some you can pick up, and you know, some again back to what I mentioned earlier about another position. There are some mid-round guys that I think are going to be impactful in this league, and I think they're. I think it's an interesting group with a lot of numbers. 
uh, not necessarily at the top of, of the of the rounds, but I think there are some interesting players that can contribute as, of course, two, three, and fours. Thomas, you were awarded Devontae nicely last year. It seems like the top five running back is kind of coming back. Can you talk about maybe the pendulum coming back to the running back the way the league is going these days? Your division, obviously. Sure. I mean, our division, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, obviously, New Orleans, New Orleans did a heck of a job this year showcasing their two guys, and we thought we did a heck of a job the year before doing that. And I think everyone realizes the importance of it and what it can add to the offensive scheme and the explosiveness. And you know, if if you're not necessarily having a team that is you know full of tight ends, where people are now throwing to their their receivers, not only throwing but running to their excuse me their running backs, it's a really really important part to you know adding explosiveness to your to your game. So, is it very important? Yes. Is it, is it, does it feel like it's becoming more important? I believe so. I still believe you can get some really good football players, you know, from three to five or three to six or seven, no question. You don't have to go to the top of the draft to find adept runners and versatile runners. Is that maybe the where the philosophical change is? You see a guy like Kamara with 700 yards of passing and receiving and maybe the workhorse running back is a different kind of guy? Yeah, I think, you know, I think you could argue as well that when people talk about change of pace backs and you talk about, you know, you, you, you have two contrasted running backs who present different things, right? In our situation, we feel like we do with, with Freeman, the way that he runs, and, you know, comparatively speaking to Tevin Coleman, how he runs. Uh, it always keeps, in our mind, it keeps the defense on their toes a little bit, and I think a lot of teams realize how important that is, you know, for, for an offensive creativity, uh, from an offensive creativity standpoint. How, how, how do you think the NFC South stacks up, you know, and compared to the other divisions, obviously three playoff teams this year? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I thought it was uh, the toughest division this year. I mean, I thought you know, I was amazed every time we turned the corner, there was some challenge that we had against, you know, playing against one of the teams. And, of course, with three teams the way that they, they ended up, um, I think we are always very dialed in on what the other teams are doing in our division. Of course, everyone is, right? It's not a, a revelation. You have to you have to be very uh, focused, and you have to win your division to get in, right? You know, this was a unique situation this year, of course. And then uh, I'm sure you don't want to talk about other teams, but how did Marshawn Lattimore change the Saints' defense you know, when you guys were approaching them? Well, I, I mean, of course, he's a he's a uh, top-notch athlete with top-notch skills. You know, he can run and cover, and and that's not that's not easy to swallow. As you know, as a, playing a rookie, you think you're going to come in there and be able to sort of. Um, expose a rookie like that and, and of course he did a heck of a job this year so I think teams are going to have to know how to how to play against him because he's going to come to play all the time and he's got fantastic ball skills as well so hey, kudos to Mickey. Given that, given that we had Derek Carr Denzel for Ward project, <laughs> Rashad, uh, teammate from Ohio State, how does Denzel Ward project into this draft? He, he projects very well I mean again those guys are playing top-notch ball up there I know you like your your uh your area up there you, you know you don't want to talk about it. no I think I think he's a really good football player and it, it'll be fun to see how he how he uh, moves around out here and how high he goes because uh, again he's got some serious background and he's gone against some top-notch players of course so he, he's he's a very good football player All right, we had Derek Carr and then Matt Stafford and now Derek Garoppolo as the highest played player do you because of that feel some pressure on you to make Matt Stafford the next person on that run? Uh, Matt Ryan. Matt, Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't really been focused on that. What are we talking about? I know. it's, it's you know, Of course of, I A have. lot of Matt's flying around. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. No, I, look, um, it's, it can be complicated, right. of course, right? There's, right. there's a lot going on right. with right. what you just had mentioned. I mean, you know, uh, where, where uh, Garoppolo is and how he's, he's performed in the short time as a starter, uh, he's, they did a heck of a job acquiring him, of course. Um, complicates things, of course. I'm not. I'm not concerned. Like I've said before, I mean, our focus is on on Matt and, and uh, getting him secured here for years to come. He wants to be with us. We want him to be here. I don't. As I've said, I don't think it's a complicated situation. I think it's a significant situation, um, and he's a very important part to the organization. So uh, there's no time frame on it right now. We're very aware of what's going on, and I think a lot of quarterbacks right now are really honed in on what's going to be happening. And it in the begs future. the question: When does it become a time frame? Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, of course, you, you want to go into this season to make sure that you have things you would like to go into the season, making sure that things are secured. But uh, there's no time frame as far as people saying, well, do you want to get this done before free agency? Of course, you'd like to get it done tomorrow if, uh, you know, just because it's a load off your mind. M you know, Matt Ryan's situation, of course, uh, has some play in dictating, you know, where we are and how creative we are in either free agency or re-signing some of our other players. We have some 
tough decisions to make, of course. Anytime you're signing a, a you know, a, a top tier quarterback, you're going to be faced with, you know, complications, and that's just the way it is. So in 2015, a lot of your draftees had high marks in the three cone drill, but in the past two years, you guys have gravitated towards guys who excel in the broad jump, like Keanu Neal, Zach McKinley. Is there a difference you're seeing on the field with guys who excel in the broad jump versus the three cone? No, I, I mean we're we're always very focused on on movement and, and three cone is very important for me personally as it is for Coach Quinn and where we are acquiring athletic moves and movement and we always talk about it being a matchup league that's very important the broad jump the power the explosiveness of it yes it plays into it we're not going to draft someone just off of those numbers as well we won't draft off of three cone um, we'll forever be focused on of course the the video the the game video that's the number one thing I'm a big believer in the you know the uh, just uh, being able to come to the combine and the, the um, work that we get done here, again, being able to, to differentiate between players, this is really important for us, not only medically, not only, um, not only from a interview standpoint, but the way that they move. Again, back to that body control, agility, quick twitch, explosiveness, that's really important for us.